Hello everyone, I'm Mike and welcome to my channel, Riding in the Ozarks. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my thoughts on the Pan America after having been given this bike to ride for an afternoon with no restrictions and no supervision. First, I want to thank Lake of the Ozarks Harley Davidson for giving me this bike for a whole afternoon. And in fact, the owner of the dealership even gave me some suggestions on places I could take it to get it off the beaten path. Second, I also want to apologize to some of the Lake Ozark Harley Davidson staff for not getting this video out sooner. Not that we had any agreement about me even doing a video on it, but I know several staff members have been waiting to hear my thoughts on this bike for several weeks now. I got the opportunity to ride this bike back in August, and now we're in fall pushing toward winter quicker than I would like. Enough about all that, let's talk about the bike I rode and my experience with the Pan America Special that day. The dealership's owner had been riding this particular bike and already had set up the display with widgets and things the way he preferred them. He went over that setup with me and I was surprised just how customizable the display is. He had also already set up some user definable modes, so I wasn't just limited to the factory ride modes. This demo bike had already been outfitted with the Screamin' Eagle Titanium Exhaust, which is about $935. I hear the exhaust upgrade doesn't change the performance, but it is 42% lighter, sounds better, and some people feel it doesn't put off as much heat as the factory silencer. It also had better foot pegs installed, and those felt quite good. They also run you about $182. I really appreciate that it was equipped with the shorter windshield already also. The 11 inch tinted shield comes in at about $132 and was perfect for me and I'm at about 5 foot 9 inches. While going over the controls, I was informed that some Pan America models were reporting a non-start on the first push of the starter button, but then it would start immediately afterwards with the second push. It's my understanding Harley has issued an update to the ECM to address this, so hopefully all the little bugs are getting worked out for this brand new model. Now this was not my first time riding the Pan America. I did get to do a short demo ride on it back in April. But that was a guided ride, and while I did get to experience what all 150 horses felt like at 9,000 RPM, it was only for a brief second, but that second was enough to leave me dying for more. If you have not experienced the Revolution Max Power Plant, you should definitely try it out the first chance you get. I am betting you won't be disappointed. Unfortunately, we did not get off a paved road anywhere during that guided ride, so I was extremely excited to get the opportunity to take the Pan America wherever I wanted for an afternoon. I had planned out this route for the afternoon that would take me down some divided highways at higher speeds, over several miles of rough gravel roads, and across an old swinging bridge. And my planned route provided for many miles of two-lane highway through the twisty countryside before coming back to the Lake of the Ozark Scenic Overlook, where I could then ride the bike up to the Strip and see how it traversed city life as well. But we all know what happens to best laid plans. I started out riding near the dealership on a short trail that was not too technical, but it did let me see what it was like to navigate this 550 pound motorcycle through some trees, across a grassy hill, and make a few slow speed maneuvers on the dirt. I would describe the Pan America as capable for this environment. A more experienced off-road rider I'm sure would feel quite at home doing this on the Pan America and at no point did I feel like the bike couldn't handle it, but I had no desire to ride beyond my skills either. I definitely was not as confident on it off-road as I am on my 350 pound DR650, but then again, I think that's more about me than the motorcycle. After this, my route took me down a stretch of divided highway that is marked at 60 mile an hour. But I found myself wanting to run 80 mile an hour and I had to force myself to back the speed down. This bike just feels so comfortable, stable, and agile that it actually feels like you had the Revolution Max engine on a leash when you're only running 60 mile an hour. It's ready to run the minute you stop paying attention and relax, and then you realize you're doing 80 mile an hour again. Before you go saying you're just impressed because you're used to riding a Harley Davidson Touring motorcycle which has a tractor for a motor. And yes, I have been told that in the comments before. I want you to know that I have ridden 23 different new and used motorcycles in the last 15 months, including a naked sport bike with over 120 horsepower that weighed less than the Pan America. A divided highway is a great place to test the power, acceleration, and even stopping power in a straight line, which I found to be all excellent. But if you want to know how a bike handles, go run it down some two-lane letter route in the Ozarks. You'll get plenty of opportunity to see how it handles the twisties, and an old two-lane letter route is probably not going to be the smoothest road you'll ever see. So you'll get to see how well the suspension works to keep a bike like this planted in a bouncy curve as well. I found myself once again running comfortably over the speed limit before I knew it. This bike is just dying to eat up the road no matter what surface you put it on. Now I'll admit, 
Once we got to the gravel portion of the trip, I felt a little nervous at first. After a few minutes, I remembered to change the riding mode and I immediately felt more confident and found I was riding at a more aggressive speed than when I had started down the gravel road. The Pan America soaked up the fairly rough gravel road with ease. Now, I'm sure a more experienced rider could have been even more aggressive, but I was slowly getting more comfortable and gaining confidence with this bike as I put more miles on it down this gravel road. On my first demo, I really felt the ergonomics were good, but now, after 30 minutes into the ride, having already been off-road, chewed up several miles of two-lane highway and divided highway, and now finally running some rough gravel roads, I knew the ergonomics on this bike were better than any other dual sport or adventure motorcycle that I've had the opportunity to ride. The ergos were just spot on comfortable for me even when standing up on the bike. And here's where my best laid plans failed. The gravel route I picked required crossing a river on a swinging bridge and it appears that the county has closed that bridge. There is no way to get around this and back onto my planned route without adding considerable more time to my ride. And I did have to get the bike back to the dealership before closing time. So now I was forced to double back over my entire route if I still wanted to get to that scenic overlook. Making it to the scenic overlook now meant I was going to have to pick up the pace or give up on the idea of a photo op from a scenic overlook above Lake of the Ozarks. Not being a quitter, I decided to go for it. As I picked up the pace, I found the traction control kicking in as needed to keep me from getting myself into trouble or from over accelerating on this loose gravel. Of course, this just inspired even more confidence and now I found myself running over 50 mile an hour on the gravel road at times. I was really beginning to appreciate how well this bike handled through the rough gravel road. It kind of reminded me of my early days of riding on my old Yamaha YZ dirt bike on back county roads before I was legally old enough to operate a motorcycle on the road. I'm hoping the statute of limitations has ran out for that and that nobody mistakes this story as an admission of guilt to a crime I may or may not have committed over 35 years ago. Now back on the twisty letter route, I continued to push the pace a little more. Nothing too crazy, but the Pan America was quite comfortable cruising 60 to 75 mile an hour through the turns, and the more I rode it on the pavement, the more it felt like a capable street bike. I was surprised just how fast it adapted from feeling like a dirt bike to feeling like a street bike again, ready to eat up the blacktop. Once I hit the divided highway again, I knew I was really going to have to haul some ass or my time would run out before I could get to the overlook and back. I found myself cruising at nearly triple digits among late Friday afternoon traffic and the Pan America felt just as much at home doing 95 mile an hour in traffic as it did slinging rocks and dirt at 35 mile an hour. And because of that, I got my scenic photo. And because this thing will climb to the triple digits in under 10 seconds, I was able to get back to the dealership 5 minutes before closing time still. I guess in closing, what I want you to know is after spending an afternoon on the Pan America, it feels like a large heavy dirt bike when you get it completely off road. That doesn't mean it's not capable, but the weight is still noticeable to me, and I'm sure this applies to any large CC Adventure Touring motorcycle. I know it applied to the BMW GS1200 Adventure I rode this summer. Now, on gravel, two-lane roads, or divided highways, this motorcycle inspires confidence. It feels nimble. The acceleration fills you with adrenaline. The ride is smooth and almost effortless to do whatever it is you want to do. Whether it's a trip to Starbucks with your BMW buddies, or a ride up a gravel road to the top of a mountain. Am I going to get one? Well, probably not. But not because I did not thoroughly enjoy every minute of riding it, but because I still do a lot of two-up touring and I just don't see me and Firecracker laying down thousands of miles two-up on this motorcycle. If I was a solo-only rider, then this thing would have been moved to the top of my wish list already. I think it is truly an awesome performing motorcycle that Harley-Davidson should be extremely proud of. I understand completely why it's the best selling adventure bike in the United States in its first year on the market. I get it may not be everyone's shot of whiskey, but for some, it's as fine as any single malt. I want to give a quick shout out to all the members that help support my channel. Hope you guys are enjoying the early access to videos. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. If you do that YouTube thing, check out the content on my channel. And if you dig it, don't forget to subscribe down below, ring that bell to be notified the next time I drop a new video. And as always, thank you for support, stay safe, and keep on riding.